Where is the car? Tie in front of the car. And it says, we just get warmed up. God's plan. I'm just obeying. Four more points on the board. We've been working for four years building. Oh, it was a birthday present. Can I don't you? have that car. I never got it. What do you mean? This is what happened. I don't have a car. So then he saw uh, an open need, I guess, mm -hmm. and was like, oh my gosh, like, you know what I was thinking for your birthday? You need a car. He sent the picture. And I'm like, for real, for real? He called me. He's like, if you don't come get this car for your birthday, I'm going to be mad at you. Shut the f- Because it's paid for. So I flew out here and woke up at eight o'clock in the morning on my birthday. And then we went and they had the bow on it. And I was excited. And then I drove it and they was like, we're going to put some the black rims on it and then send it to you in like two weeks. After like two months, I'm like, where's the car? I called him. And I'm like, yo, what's up with the car? And he gave me a really bogus excuse. Like, I'm going to pick it up in a couple of days and drive it to Alabama because that's where the company paid for the car. Some crazy story. And then he said, my brother is the one who bought the car, not me. The point of the story is I never saw the car, got the car, nothing. And it was just like the biggest lie I probably ever been told in my entire life. What I want to know is, did he get the cheeks? Did he clap the cheeks? Because if he finessed you out them cheeks by promising you a car, that is demonic behavior. That is demonic behavior. Boy, that sound like some Nigerian scamming my boy. That sound like some Nigerian scamming shit. Now, don't sleep. My best friend is Nigerian, but them be scamming. They be scamming, scamming. This is the first. Let me, let me tell y'all a story. It's a story that, that was passed down to me. It was this guy. He did real estate. Made a lot of money doing real estate. And he's from my hometown. He's from Brooklyn. Through passing, he met a Nigerian. The Nigerian was like, bro, if you if you bring me $1,000, I can triple it for you. Basically, Nigerian dude had, he had the actual paper that you printed money on. So, dude was like, all right, bought him $1,000. The Nigerian copied and pasted the money, pretty much, on the, the paper. He took $500 and gave him the rest. Now, the crazy thing about this whole situation is when they met, they met at the dude's office. Like, the dude had an office someplace in Marietta. The office came complete with a secretary. So, homie took the money. He went to the strip club. He went... He turned up. They kept in contact. He went to dude's office. Like, they, they kept in contact, bro. I just want you to understand, he been to this office multiple times. Alright, it's time for another transaction. This time, he bought like $25,000. Dude was like, yo, give me a little bit. I got you. A little bit turned into three days. Three days turned into like five days or something like that. So he's trying to contact this dude. He can't get in contact with him. So he decides to show up to the office. Why did the office disappear? <laughs> you heard me. The office disappeared. It looked like a vacant space when he went up there. I caught 64 bodies in five years. 64? I, uh, I had this best friend. She was in her host stage. And then I caught like 50 bodies arresting me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. What? Wait, first of all, you're not going to speed past Six that. Like you didn't just say what you just said. I blame that. I was celibate for seven months. And I became best friends with her. And I blame her. You can't blame her. For my action, I'm going to blame her. The fuck? I don't care. I'm going to blame her. She ain't open your legs? Her. No, I can't. I was seven, I was seven months. Celibate. She was in the beginning of a whole stage. I was trying to show her. You know, I was trying to show her, like, you can't do this. You can't do this. But then you just did it. You said, <laughs> you gave him 50. You gave him 50. You gave him 50 ball. You gave him a 50 ball. No, I, no I'm going to blame her, though. I fucked up. I fucked up, too. I could be it. I could. I'm taking kind of 64 bodies in five years is crazy work. Then she had the audacity to say that she was seven months celibate. You know what that sound like? That sound like when you go on a diet and then when you finally eat, you eat enough food to make up for the food you missed out on when you was on your diet. That's what that sound like. She was on a p diet and, um, hmm. I'm sorry. Let's bring it back. She was fasting. That's what we're going to say. In seven months, she was fasting. And when it was time to, uh, when it was dinner time, it was dinner time for real. What are your hours? Ms. Softman, the fire, the fire people Jonathan. that was here this morning Jonathan. was outside. They had to get Jonathan, in the building. Stop talking. Um, what are your hours? My hours is from 6.30 to 3 o'clock. Okay. Why did you leave today at 2.45? I didn't leave at 2.45. You did? I did not leave at 2.45. We were calling you. When I left, it what was... Time did you, what time do you think you left? 
When I left, when I was leaving out that door, when I was leaving out that door, it was 52 when I was going out that door. Because you left early. I didn't leave early because I was here early. What time do you work till? What are your hours? Miss Hoffman? I have never had a boss that spoke to me like that, but I guarantee you, if any supervisor, manager come out they face to me like this, I don't know, bro. Like, cause I'm respectful. That's that's one thing about me. I'm big on respect, so I'm respectful to you. Gonna be respectful to me, regardless of what position you holding over me. Watch your mouth. Jonathan, the fire Jonathan, people that was here this morning Jonathan, was outside. They had to get Jonathan, in the building. Jonathan, stop talking. Woo! It's not open until 6.30. What? You don't adjust your hours just because you feel like it. I didn't do it because I felt like it, Miss Hoffman. I was doing it to help the fire people who, to get inside the building. Who told you to open the building early? Did your boss, Susan Offerman, tell you to start your hours early today? I was not supposed Did, to start my hours early okay. today, but... Like I was but telling nothing. you, the fire people had to get inside. They were sitting Who out there for boss? almost an hour. Who is your boss? Is your boss Susan Offerman or the fire marshal? Who is your boss? Well, so often you use my boss. Okay. I, 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 I never, you sound I never like a slave, bro. I, I explained my hours. 6.30 to 3. Yes. Jonathan, if you are your hours. He sound like a slave. Man, y'all to see this work because miss offerman miss o you know what i wouldn't even give it to miss offerman i'd give it to her husband pause tell your husband come up here tell your husband come up here tell him come up here tell him come up here i'll show him something i'll show him some work I show him some work. I had in my resignation that day, but guess what? I'm gonna resign my fist on your husband's face. Fuck you talking to like that, folks. Have some dignity for yourself, man. Don't let nobody come out their face to you like that. Have some dignity. There's other jobs out here in the world. Shit, it's other ways to make money out here in the world. Ain't no way, dog. Serious question. What would you do if the guy that you were seeing made a female friend dinner at his place? Like an elaborate dinner. I'm dying. Okay, so this is what he made his female friend. This is a cheese board. I have no idea what this is, but he made that. Some pasta. The pasta looks amazing. This looks absolutely amazing, not gonna lie. And he even plated it. He plated it. He was like, oh, I made something and sent me all these pictures and I was just wowed. I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks beautiful. Oh, but then naturally I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> were you on a date? And that's completely fine. Like, you're not my man, you know, we're not together. We're just talking. So if he was, which clearly like this is, this is a date, but th that's completely fine. You know, we're not together. But this guy was like, oh no, no, I just cook like this for, you know, my friends all the time. You know, whether it's men or women. I made it for my friend and he named off some woman's name. I don't want to be uh, talking to someone or dating someone who feels like they need to spend one-on-one -on -one time with someone in a very intimate way. Ma'am, ma'am, he is obviously clapping her cheeks. Ain't no man in his right mind is making food like, you know what? I take that back. It's dudes out here that would do stuff like that in hopes of clapping them cheeks. So, I'm going to retract my statement and correctly say that if he has not clapped them cheeks, he is working his way up to clapping them cheeks. You know, you know, you know what's going on, sis. I'm pretty sure you got a dude on your team right now that is doing all types of unnecessary things for you in hopes of clapping your cheeks. You coming on, on TikTok acting stupid. You know what's going on. This is like extremely intimate. It's almost performing for someone. Um, so yeah, I, I just wouldn't want my potential someone or my boyfriend or my husband doing something like all of this 
for another woman. Went on talking about, oh, that we're not together, but like, I would want my person to trust me and this and that. But it doesn't come down to trust. It goes down to him not knowing boundaries. Because it's if you're if you're doing stuff like this, what else are you doing for your female friends? To me, that's just red flags all over the place. And it just shows that there's a lack of boundaries. So I just ended up messaging him back. Just letting him know that that's not something that I'm personally okay with. And there's plenty of women out there who would be okay with it but i'm just not one of them here's the thing everyone is different there's gonna be women out there who are like that's completely fine i feel secure in myself i feel confident about my man and i you know i trust him and this and that that's completely fine and again it's not about trust for me it's just boundaries i want there to be very very clear boundaries if i'm talking to someone and i want them to know like what's appropriate and what isn't appropriate what do you guys think? It's 2024 now, and we already know that no woman is only talking to one man, unless they have made it official. If they have not made it official, she is talking to multiple men. I am 100% positive that it's a few guys on her roster that's doing unnecessary things for her. That is breaking their necks to try to impress her. Just like the dude that she's talking to, is breaking his neck to try to impress some other chick. The only thing he did that's kind of stupid was tell tell you. Why is he telling you? There was no need for him to send you any pictures unless he was trying to make you jealous, but that was stupid on his part. So no, I think you, you full of shit. Did you know there's a guy who was arrested 32 times for a pretty unusual hobby? Darius McCollum impersonated a transit worker and commandeered over 500 buses and subway trains in New York for 30 years. Here's the crazy part. He drove them on route and on time, just like a real employee. And get this, he never got paid for it. McCollum's fascination with trains started at 15 when he first drove an E-train to the World Trade Center. The transit workers knew him, often turned a blind eye, and even let him do his thing. McCollum wasn't just some random guy with a transit obsession. He had a deep understanding of the system. He attended union meetings, though he wasn't a member, and knew every detail of the operations. His story highlights the fine line between passion and obsession. While his actions were illegal, they were driven by a pure love for trains and the transit system. Darius McCollum, a man who lived a life on the rails, but not quite the way you'd expect. Follow for more unnecessary hobbies. I heard, I heard about this story before. I actually heard about him before. And it's a sad situation because I think that he would make a great transit worker. Shout out to the MTA, man. I know a lot of people don't like the MTA, but I'm sorry. My father worked for the MTA for 30 years, 35 years. I'm not sure how long he worked for the MTA. He worked for the MTA for a minute. He just recently retired last year, living his best life. But uh, what I would say, bro, the MTA is one of the most stressful jobs ever it is one of the most stressful jobs ever i know a lot of y'all don't have respect for bus drivers you know i've heard so many messed up ass stories about people getting on the bus and spitting on drivers i think some lady tried to or dude tried to spit on my father one time let me tell you something do you know and i'm gonna knock on wood because my father just retired but the life expectancy for a bus driver or a transit worker after they retire is like six months. So just think about that. These dudes be working these jobs 25, 35, 40 plus years. And when they retire, their life expectancy is six months. 300 for side, 1038. Uh, 75 southbound. Think of the reason why you're traveling 67 in the left hand lane. I'm gonna get over. You're fixing to get over. Give his ass a ticket. The why you came over in the lane if you're traveling below the speed limit. Give him a ticket. So that's why I'm gonna get over. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, so you realize you're getting passed by faster traffic to the right. The driver here was traveling 67 miles per hour in the left hand lane. We confirmed his speed on on laser there. Uh, he did admit that he was traveling uh, too slow and that he knew he was getting passed by uh, faster traffic. Um, he does have a cell phone in his in his lap. Uh, he said that doesn't that wasn't contributing to uh, him driving Ooh. slow, uh, but he did know that he was just driving too slow in the left lane. 
Uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to issue one citation and three warnings, okay? Issuing a citation for not having your license on your person, okay? I'm going to warn you about the slower traffic to keep right, and we'll warn you, I'm going to also warn you there about the yielding to the left there, okay? And then uh, what you need to make sure you do is, is keep your phone out of your lap. Oh, this, this, this GSP? Time out. Hold on. The cop is doing God's work because I hate people who park their ass up in the left lane when they know in the left lane there's straight gang shit going on over there. If you going in that far left lane, that means that you don't plan on obeying no speed limit at all. Speed limit 65, we doing 85 and up. Now, secondly, it's kind of tricky because he was doing 67. Okay? Now... He's doing 67, and in Georgia, the speed limit is uh, 65. Some spots is 70, but it's usually 65. So he's actually obeying the speed limit. I'm a little, I'm happy that the cop gave his ass a ticket, but still at the same time, I'm confused because he was two miles above the speed limit. 